Okay, thanks, Lauren. Okay, I think we're we're live on uh, YouTube and Facebook. So welcome everybody to Cyberfest 2020. Uh, so this is SF Zine Fest's uh, event, uh, the Show and Tell Group G. Uh, on Monday, September 14th. So um, first we're gonna, gonna go over um, our introduction here. Um, then we're gonna cover our house rules and expectations. Uh, then we're gonna go into some breakout rooms so that um, the exhibitors can, can get to know one another. Meanwhile, I'll be um, doing something else for the, uh, uh, the live stream while that's happening. Um, then the bulk of the meeting tonight is gonna be exhibitors presenting their work, uh, telling, them, telling us about themselves um, and where we can find their work to, to support them and, um, and, and see what they have to offer. Then we'll take uh, questions for exhibitors and viewers if there's time. Um, and then we'll, we'll close out the, uh, the sessions and, and let you know when the next events are gonna be. So San, San Francisco Zine Fest was founded in 2001 as a gathering place for writers and artists from around the world, but especially from the Bay Area. And it was, it's typically been a one day event held at the County Fair building in Golden Gate Park. Uh, last year we had 240 exhibitors and over 5,000 attendees. Um, but due to the pandemic this year, um, the fest is entirely virtual. So we're doing three weeks of virtual events. Uh, we have these show and tell um, sessions. We have readings, workshops, demonstrations, interviews. Um, and this week, uh, this year, we um, have the opportunity to have three guests of honor. Usually we, we have had um, just one at the uh, in-person fest, but because, you know, this is a longer format, we're able to uh, feature three guests. Um, so the week one guest was Alex L. Combs. Um, week two in right now is Death P. Sun. And week three is going to be Tana Tucker. Um, so I'll go over the safer spaces policy that we also have at our in-person festival and all of our events. We are committed to providing a harassment free experience for everyone, regardless of gender, gender identity or expression, sexual orientation, disability, physical appearance, body size, race, or religion. We will not tolerate harassment at SF Zine Fest events in any form. Individuals violating the safer spaces policy may be sanctioned or expelled from the space or the event at the discretion of any Z SF Zine Fest organizer. So this means that we must respect people's opinions, beliefs, differing states of being and different points of view, always to get verbal consent before taking someone's photo or crossing other personal boundaries, be responsible for your actions and aware that they may have an effect on others regardless of your original intent and a safe and respectful community is everyone's responsibility. So some guidelines for Zoom and our, our, visual, our virtual uh, meeting here. Um, please keep your video off uh, unless you're presenting um, just so that we can guarantee the um, uh, video quality. Please keep yourself on mute unless you're presenting um, so you can cut down on chatter. If you have a question, uh, go ahead and ask it in the chat. Uh, it'll, it's moderated so um, Anything you want to know, we'll just put it in there. Artists will have four minutes to share their work and you can use your four minutes however you like. So um, that can be reading from your work, um, giving us an overview, you know, you can screen share, um, whatever you want to do. Uh, you can feel free to use the chat to, to you know, give compliments to each other or, or just shout out if something looks cool or say hi. Um, it's, it's a pretty uh, open format there. Our ASL interpretation is provided by Nicole Watson and Raul Castillo, and they're doing a fantastic job. We're really happy to have them uh, from Pro Bono ASL. Um, please be mindful for folks who are blind or visually impaired uh, by being specific and descriptive when sharing your work. Um, also try to remember to, to speak uh, slowly and clearly because we've got um, ASL interpretation, as I mentioned. Um, the Zoom session is being recorded and broadcast to Facebook and YouTube. 
Um, so please be respectful as I know everyone will be and we're gonna have a great time. So now uh, we'll be splitting up the tonight's exhibitors into breakout rooms so that we can, um, everybody can get to know each other and introduce themselves. Um, this is gonna be for three minutes uh, until we um, have everyone comes back to the main room. This is the prompt, just a suggestion. You can feel free to talk about whatever you like, but the prompt that I came up with for tonight uh, what is something that many people may not know about you? So um, with that, we'll go ahead and I'll stop screen sharing and we'll take it into the breakout rooms. Okay, looks like everyone's going into the rooms. Um, I'm going to share the screen again so that we can pull up the um, link to the... Uh, there we go. So please support SF Zine Fest uh, by buying merch from our store. Right uh, this year, we we aren't able to do um, uh, collect tabling fees, which is usually how we pay for uh, SF Zine Fest. So we're we're kind of at a, a disadvantage here in terms of raising money for keeping it, having it next year. So um, we really want to uh, have have a great festival next year. And every time you buy something, it directly supports uh, Zine Fest and. Um, you know, ensures that we can uh, provide this space for, for artists to, uh, to show their work. So um, now I'm going to go to the uh, breakout room activity. Just bear with me one second here. Right, this is a library book that I checked out in February and uh, wasn't able to return it ever. Um, and, uh, it's, it's a very good book. Uh, I basically, I just want to do a, like a brief, um, graphic novel review of it. Um, and it's, it's called the lie and how we told it by Tommy Parrish, who, um, I believe maybe, um, yeah, an Australian, uh, graphic novelist. Um, so the whole thing is, um, kind of this simple story about two, friends who haven't uh, seen each other for a while and they they've uh, they're reconnecting and and just kind of catching up about where their life has taken them and it's it's fascinating because um there's a lot of these moments where the there's just kind of these unfinished colors um and unfilled areas of the page and and so it's it, it's it seems like you know me as an artist i would think oh i, I have to you know have to get this really clean look that uh, make sure that I'm I'm filling in all the all the all the parts of what I'm trying to say but um, this is this is a, a kind of a, a more intentionally loose um, storytelling technique um, like there's there's some pages without any panel borders um, there's also this this kind of a variation here going on with this book within a book even the um, the page uh, the paper quality is is different um, in these sections so it's it's uh, it's just got a lot of you know kind of very playful um, transitions um, between you know what's what's going on in in the story and the story within the story and um, and it, at the end of it it's it's really touching and heartfelt um, story with, without giving too much away but just about where friendship takes us and you know, how, how people grow and change, but you can recognize as time goes on, um, kind of what, you know, who you are through the friends in your life. And um, I think it's, it's just a really um, cool and powerful message that, um, especially as, as we think about all the friends uh, and, and people in our lives uh, this year that we're kind of finding new ways to stay connected to. So, it's called The Lie and How We Told It by Tommy Parrish. So yeah, hope, hope everyone uh, see, see people are coming back gradually from the breakout rooms. Um, so we had a, uh, everybody got to, got to know each other and have a little conversation in the breakout rooms. Looking like, looking like that's the case. Um, if everyone is ready, I would like to uh, start with our um, presentations. Uh, I think some people are still in their room. Okay, gotcha. 
All right. Um, let's see here. Okay. And now it looks like everybody's back. Yep. Okay. Terrific. Well, great. Now that now that everyone's back from the breakout rooms, um, I'd like to uh, get it started with um, presenting the exhibitors who are here. So we'll we'll be starting with, um, and I'll be screen sharing again, starting with just one moment here. Dust tuned. So, so just to go back really quick, um, this is the order of the presentations tonight. Um, a few uh, presenters aren't going to be here tonight, so I'll be giving an overview of their work. But um, Dustin of Dustuned is here. Um, and he will be able to take it away. So Dustin, whenever you're ready. I'm sorry, Dustin, you are muted right now. <laughs> Excuse me, sorry. Hi everyone, I'm Dusty. Uh, thanks for coming. Um, I'm here to show a little bit of my work and what I've been up to. Uh, this is my fourth year in SF Zine Fest, so I'm happy to be a part of it on the internet. And uh, let's get started and I'll be showing you some of my stuff, so. Okay. Hi, I'm Dusty. I'm a cartoonist from uh, Downey, California. And uh, for those of you who've been on the internet for a while, you'll probably know me best with uh, the MF Boom fan film uh, that came out in 2016, I believe. Uh, this is what I'm best known for on the internet. Um, but my first zine uh, was the following, which is called Tucker Toon. It's a series of surrealist uh, comics of a pantomime devil-like character and its misadventures into the surreal. Uh, later on in 2017, I made one of my most important pieces and brought it to SF Zine Fest 2018, which is my uh, graphic novel series called Melvin. It's a story about an estranged rabbit who's been excommunicated uh, from his home forest after the death of his best friend. Uh, and he's just trying to get back home. Here's a, also another page of level number two, where he finds himself in a city and he accidentally conjures a demon after accidentally igniting a homeless person on fire after crash landing on there. I also was part of an anthology in 2018 for a Latinx anthology. I am a Nicaraguan Cuban uh, creator as well. And uh, this was part of the anthology called Tales from the Vida. It was uh, curated by one of my good friends, uh, Frederick Luis Adarma, who's a professor in Ohio State University. Um, and then around uh, two years ago, I started attending um, um, California Center of the Arts, uh, College of the Arts, excuse me, and I just recently graduated with an MFA in comics. This was one of the projects that I did. Uh, this was based on a trip that I had on marijuana throughout Oakland, and uh, it's called Tripping. I also did this uh, during my time there. This is a horror comic that I did with digital watercolors called Ton Ton. It's a short story that I, horror story um, about a young boy who's hearing sounds and it seems to carry all the way throughout the story even after he starts experiencing traumatic uh, things on the way home. And then I also started experimenting with HTML comics uh, in my program. So this is one of the projects I did called La Lenia. It's a kind of an experimental surrealist uh, comic. Unfortunately, it's animated, but I can't show that on here. Um, but you can find it on my website if you're willing, if you'd like to see the whole thing. And then during my time uh, at CCA, I finished my senior thesis. This is what you probably saw on the flyer. This is my comic called Masks. I'm currently working on towards uh, getting it kickstarted by the end of the year to produce the final product as a book form. Here's another page from the comic as well. And that's it for me. Thanks for checking out my work. And you can find all my work at dusttune.com. And you can also follow me on Instagram with the same name, at dusttuned. All right, thanks, Dusty. Um, you do have thirty seconds left. If there's any any other thing that you, any other project you've, yeah, 
Um, I'm also working on a graphic novel with a collaborator. It is a uh, my first collaboration, and uh, it's an amazing story about Nicaragua and about how a migrant worker goes through an odyssey to make money to fly out to Spain to visit his girlfriend. But on the way, he sees a bunch of uh, creatures from Nicaragua and Central American folklore. And it become, and it progressively gets more intense as the story goes on. So I'm really excited uh, to be a part of that. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks so much. All right. Uh, next up, we're going to have Lawrence Lindell, who was the 2019 San Francisco Zine Fest guest of honor. So we're super excited and happy to have you um, with us tonight, Lawrence, please take it away when you're ready. Awesome. Um, I'm gonna keep my video off um, sharing and then I'll bring it back on at the end. Okay, cool. So I'm Lawrence. Uh, I use he, they pronouns and I make a lot of comics about mental health, blackness and queerness. And I've been doing Zine Fest since 2012. And if you see me at a Zine Fest, I probably took a picture of you if you bought one of my books or we traded. it. Um, pretty prolific because I have mania for my bipolar, so I tend to make a lot of zines and comics. And yeah, I also do music. So if you go on Spotify and type in my name, you could find all the albums I've done over the years. And this year I released my graphic memoir from Truth With Truth. And as of yesterday, all of the copies of the physical print have been sold out. So that's exciting. And yeah. I do a lot of comics about being bipolar, having PTSD, being queer. I'm also a dungeon master, which is kind of cool. And I like to fuse the two with um, mental health and RPG games. And I also like voguing. So I do a lot of comics dedicated to Vogue at the bottom, specifically Vogue Femme for the five elements. And this year I did a design for San Francisco AIDS Foundation, which is pretty cool to celebrate pride. And if you go to shop.safaf.org, you can buy some of the designs there. Also did a comic for the New Yorker. Well, I've done three, but my latest one came out yesterday. So you should check that out. And some of the cool stuff I get to do in the Bay and at Comic Fest, so Bayer Cuisine Fest for 2018, SBX 2018, and of course, San Francisco Zine Fest, which is special because it was my first Zine Fest of my solo art tour. And to be the guest of honor last year was pretty cool. Currently, I focus mainly on the Baileys, which is a project I started in 2018 to highlight queer cartoonists and cartoonists of color in the Bay Area. Dustin's actually one of, he was the second cartoonist in it. So it's kind of cool to see a lot of cartoonists and Avi was number five. So it's pretty cool. If you go to thebaileys.com, you can look at interviews and comics and all those type of things. And if you want anything from me, just go to lawrencelindale.com. Everything you need to know about me is at my website. And if you like YouTube and stuff, you can check out things I've done. Uh, I was also the special guest for the Queer Comics Expo this year. And my partner interviewed me. Uh, the Believer Comics has my workshop up for free, which is really cool. And SBX just released their panels. And mental health requires rest, is not optional. I know this world doesn't always allow for rest, but when you do rest, know you deserve it and it's needed. And for the rest of my time, I just wanna leave some local stuff here in the Bay up. So if you wanna take a picture or write it down, you can. And yeah. That's awesome, Lawrence. Um, are there any of these um, you wanna highlight or? Um, or um, if, yeah, go, go ahead. Yeah, like free comic is doing really great stuff uh laser zine neighborhood comics of course ebabs which is where i met my current current wife she's gonna kill me uh my wife uh queer comics expo mission arts comics so yeah there's a lot of things here in the bay a lot of community that you can support and yeah so we're cool. it nice um <laughs> got a hashtag trending in the chat um Lawrence, uh, how how has the experience been of um, finding a printer and dealing with the logistics of, of getting your book out? It was um, it was okay. I did Kickstarter, which mm -hmm. uh, I canceled it because I wasn't going to meet my goal, but yet I still put the book out. So that's kind of inspiration for anybody. Oh, absolutely! <laughs> yeah, that's a great thing. Well, great. Um, thanks so much for sharing. We're really happy to have you. As I said, so um, we're going to move on to. Um, 
Our next presenter is going to be, oops, something in there. Um, just pulling up the screen. Uh, sorry, so the next presenter is going to be Yael Levy. So Yael, um, when you are ready, just gonna... Muted. Hello? Hello. Hello. <laughs> I didn't make a slideshow. <laughs> so this is gonna be a little bit more scattered, but hi. Oh, no worries. Um, I was actually just gonna maybe do a little, well, maybe I, um, I'm Yael. Um, I make comics and I also screen print and teach and paint and do all these things. Um, I was gonna just do a little of like show like physically some of the zines, um, just cause it's funny, I just actually had a bunch of stock printed right before um, lockdown started for a bunch of shows I was going to do and that all got canceled. Um, so I do like a combination of autobiographic nonfiction things with like some nonfiction things that are other people's stories. And then there's a monster I'll get to in a minute. So this is some of like my own stuff. This is, uh, I actually also went through the MFA in comics program. This was like the first few pages of my thesis, which is a story of some stuff that I it's about some housing stuff in the Bay Area. It's called OK Bye. Um, you can kind of see that literally every zine is slightly different size and format. I guess I can do some of this too. Um, this is a travel zine. Um, and I guess I don't have, uh, this is actually kind of old from a comic I did for the Nib that's about um, this Palestinian girl who was arrested. She's since been released. It's kind of really old, but I feel like people actually still get that from me a lot because um, it has a lot of the background of what actually happened that uh, maybe not everybody's familiar with. Um, I do kind of, I want to, if I have time to read a little bit, I do want to go into this a little one, this one a little bit. Um, this uh, is like my most recent comic is about my name and how it gets butchered and what the actual story and the meaning of my name is kind of thing. Um, it was created for an anthology that now exists, but I haven't actually seen yet because again, I was going to get my copies in New York at the show that never happened. Um, all of these things are available on my store, on my website. Um, the last like sort of physical, also all in different sizes is the Biscuit Beast. Um, this is like the big zine that sort of actually has some of like Biscuit's background story and kind of collects a lot of art uh, related to this character that I've been playing with for a few years. Actually, he was kind of born also in the MFA and comics program. Um, and then I have a bunch of, I use him when I teach kids or adults. I have a bunch of little zines about how to make the little zine that they are. Um, and I think, let me do this screen. Um, so can I do that? Do I do the whole thing? I only do one at a time. So this is, uh, again, uh, this is actually a little diary comic I just put out this week. Um, but this is my website where you can find all the things. Um, there's actually some uh, links to some online lessons too about making zine from the Richmond Art Center. Um, and also, I think they were supposed to go live today, but I think it might happen sometime later this week. I'm teaching a uh, comic class for teens uh, in the fall for the Richmond Art Center and also figure drawing for adults. Um, if you, I think it's on here actually, if you join my mailing list, there's a button right there for that, um, you can find out about exciting things that happen when they happen. This is a store. 
where you can buy all the things that I just showed you on Instagram. I'm Mia Elifly. Um, and where I feel like I kind of rambled. What's the time? How much? Oh, the, unfortunately, you are out of time. Cool. Well, um, if but you thank you for so much for sharing all the of. The thing about the name is on that website, or uh, buy it. <laughs> Great. Terrific. Well, thanks so much, Yael. Yay. All right. Um, next up is Nia King. Hi, everyone. I'm Nia King. I'm a queer mixed race artist and activist. I currently live in Philadelphia, um, but I lived in the Bay for a long time. And my newest zine, which is called Art Life 3.5, Why I Left the Bay, is about getting priced out and also about working in retail for five years. I actually worked at the print shop right across from CCA. So if you were a student there, I probably had you as a customer <laughs> and you might even be in the zine, but it's unlikely unless you were a really terrible customer. So I am, oh, just gonna share my contact info real quick and then I'm gonna go ahead and start reading the introduction. I lived in Oakland for over 10 years, 2008 to 2019. I spent the last five years working at a coffee shop. I eventually left the Bay because my rent kept going up and I could no longer make ends meet on a cashier's wages. Long before I escaped the service industry, I knew I wanted to write about it. I decided to mine old diary entries for inspiration. Before you read diary entries from this difficult time in my life, I want you to know that I'm in a much better place now. I miss Oakland, but my I miss Oakland terribly, but my life is markedly better in Philly. My rent is lower, the heat of my apartment actually works. And in Oakland, I was a retail worker. In Philadelphia, I'm a news editor and producer. While I definitely miss my friends, the sunshine and the diversity of Oakland, moving to Philly was definitely the right choice for me. I avoided these diaries for a long time, in part because I didn't want to relive the harrowing breakups, the dumb fights with friends, of which there were many, or to be confronted with my own jealousy regarding the successes of my peers. I've cut most of that out in the hopes that I can appear a likable character in my own story. I had hoped what was left would be some great meditation on labor, disability, workaholism, and how customer service wears away at your personhood as well as your body. I'm not sure I accomplished that, but I think this collection of diary entries, tweets from a since deleted account, and Yelp reviews, Yelp reviews sorry, of me personally, <laughs> and photos provides a pretty good idea of what my post-college time in the service industry was like. I was surprised and disappointed to find how much I hadn't written down about my days in the service industry. High points like talking about books with the ex-superintendent of Oakland, hanging out with an ex-Black Panther, and then a quintessentially Oakland moment, seeing that ex-Black Panther high-five an older white lesbian. She was actually faculty at CCA. <laughs> Low points like the customer who came up behind me while I was walking to work and told me he was stalking me because he thought that was a funny joke and the customer I was worried might actually be stalking me. This is about the weird double life I had for five years where I was the girl from the coffee shop by day and the somewhat successful artist slash journalist by night. I published three books while working retail and hosted, edited and produced over a hundred episodes of my podcast, We Want the Airwaves, on which I interviewed queer and trans artists of color. That includes uh, Brina, sorry, Lawrence and his current wife, Brina, <laughs> episode 95. Uh, but the problem with supplementing your day job with passion projects is that you're always fucking working. How am I doing on time? Um, you are doing fine. You got a minute left. Okay. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read my bio real quick. And then if there's time left, I might read one of these Yelp reviews. Oh, yeah, please. Uh, so for a long time, it's written in third person, which I realized now is weird. <laughs> for a long time, all Nia King wanted was a living wage job with benefits where she got to sit down. Now that she has that, she's trying to figure out what she wants next. Nia is also host, editor, and producer of We Want the Airwaves, a monthly podcast on which she interviews queer and trans artists of color about their lives and their work. She has self-published many of these interviews in a book series, Queer and Trans Artists of Color, Volumes 1 through 3. Which I have here to show you. Um, she co edited volume one with Jessica Glennon Zukoff and Tara Michelson, volume two with Elena Rose in 2016, 
and Volume 3 with Maliha Ahmed in 2019. So this book will be a year old on October 19th. Um, I don't think I have time to read more, but if you want to ask me a question, I'd be happy to try and answer it in the time we have left. Um, what's, what's like the, the just in a few words, the, the best Yelp review? <laughs> or it can't be summarized. Yeah, no, there's, no, there's one that's like, everyone at this, uh, at this coffee shop is so nice, except for the girly hair, uh, the girl with the curly hair. She always has a bad <laughs> attitude. Oh, I no. Avoid this place when she's working. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. oh, that's good. We're, we're all going to have to check that out now, now that we've gotten that little, little teaser. So thank you so much. Um, thank you, Nia, for sharing. Um, we're going to move on. Um, it looks like we have a, um, a couple people who can't be here. Uh, so I will be presenting their work instead. Um, so I'll go ahead and uh, get that up here. Um, so first is Small Supply, um, uh, which is- um, I'm here. Dan What's that? I'm here. Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay, please um, take it away then. You, you have uh, four minutes for your uh, presentation. Great. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Danielle. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, and I make scenes about mental health and self-care um, under the name Small Supply. I've been making zines for about five years as a way of coping with um, anxiety and depression and chronic pain. And I tabled at SF Zine Fest um, last year and it was super fun. And I'm grateful to be with all of you here. Um, the first zine that I ever made for Small Supply was Pocket Panic Volume One. It's called Grounding Yourself, and it features um, a little five senses grounding meditation. And I use this one uh, often, especially right now during this time. Um, from there, I made uh, five additional volumes, which I'll go through. So volume two is called Panic Snacks. And then cognitive distortions, which are the thought patterns that are referenced in cognitive behavior therapy. And then checking in, which is all about um, checking in with the mind and body, making sure that we're drinking enough water. And then creative visualizations uh, for good days and bad days. So, an example would be me as a comfy pillow or me as a potato. And then during this time in shelter in place, I also made volume six quarantine snacks edition, which is a lot of the foods that I've been eating during this time. Bread pudding, a lot of tuna salad. Um, I also write manifestos as a practice of self-care and setting intentions. I've been doing that for about five years also. Um, so this year I made a zine called Every Day is Egg Day, which has a collection of all of the manifestos that I've written um, over the last five years. And they're all pretty short, they're in list form. And all of these are available in my shop at small.supply. Um, and then also, in addition to making zines, I organize objects neatly in a process called knolling. You might have seen um, examples of that on Instagram with the hashtag things organized neatly. And I do a version of that, but with sentimental objects. So I made this book called Sentimental Knolling. And it's all um, pictures of the arrangements that I've made over the last five years and features objects organized very neatly. Um, 
And so what I'll do now actually is just briefly share my screen so that you can see some of those up close. So these are some of them in the book and you can see that they're um, often arranged by color or theme sometimes. And this is a really meditative practice for me, but they're also kind of nice to look at. That's wonderful. That's all I have for now. Nice. Great, Danielle, thank you so much. And I'm so sorry, I almost, uh, almost skipped you. I, was, uh, I wrote it down wrong. Um, so um, Danielle, also just, just really quick, I have a bread pudding question. Do you like yes. bread pudding made from a lot of different breads or just one type? I sometimes mix breads <laughs> if they're yes, all. our stale ones. Absolutely. Well, thank you. Yeah, I like it because you got you get different textures and flavors, get some sourdough in there, some challah, and all sorts of stuff. Um, great, well, um, Let's see. Next up is um, Space Quail, um, who I'm just going to double check the participant list. Um, I don't see them there. Um, so I will be um, presenting Space Quail. And if, if that does happen, please just, just speak up and, and I'll, I'll certainly, you know, we'll. Um, have you uh, present your own work. So Space Quail um, uh, is the, the work of Andy Is Isabel, um, they, them. Um, and uh, Andy is a cartoonist that does illustrations, comics, and zines. And their, their work most ranges around mental health in some shape or form, and a few different kinds of zines about different topics. They just want someone to connect with their work, whether it be big or small, which I think is something we can all um, agree with, especially with, with zine making. Um, you, you, wanna, you wanna make an impression and, and have something be meaningful that somebody takes with them um, after fests like these. Um, Andy's uh, work is available at um, the links that are um, on screen. Oh, shoot, am I screen sharing? I'm not, let me, let me screen share um, so I can. I can show this. Okay. Um, so the links are on screen there. Um, Instagram, um, Etsy, Venmo, and um, uh, the portfolio website there. Um, so some some lovely um, watercolor uh, looks like um, an ink work. Um, so. Yeah, check out Space Quail. All right, next up is PM Press, who also um, isn't here tonight, I understand. Um, PM Press is out of Oakland, California. Um, their image is this um, wonderful um, kind of, it's, it's, a, it's a ink drawing, looks like, it could be digital, but it's, it's that black and white line work of a letter press, like an old fashioned um, crank with, with those handles on it. Um, PM Press, Press is an Oakland-based independent radical publisher of zines, zine anthologies, comic books, and media to educate, entertain, and inspire. Our aim is to deliver bold political ideas and vital stories to all walks of life and arm the dreamers to, defend, to demand the impossible. We're old enough to know what we're doing and young enough to know what's at stake. Join us to create a better world. Um, their website is pmpress.org. Um, they have an Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, um, donation link, and um, an option for membership uh, to support the press. So that is PM Press. We'll move on to Fiddler's Green Peculiar Parish Magazine, another one um, that can't be here today. So I will be introducing it. Um, Fiddler's Green is... Um, uh, is, is this, the, the images of it are, are um, there's a, a gorgeous um, uh, embossed kind of metallic um, calligraphy font of the, the title Fiddler's Green Peculiar Parish Mar Magazine on, on these um, 
very kind of neatly organized um, uh, magazine format um, zines. Um, so Fiddler's Green Peculiar Parish Magazine is based out of Berkeley, California, and it's the uh, creation of Clint Marsh, who uses elements of myth, magic, folklore, and humor to help readers navigate everyday life. He is the author of The Mentalist's Handbook and the editor of P Fiddler's Green Peculiar Parish Magazine. Um, the work can be found at fiddlersgreenzine.com. Uh, there's an Instagram. Um, there's a, a shop on the website that I mentioned um, that, uh, that you can buy past issues at, I believe. Um, there's a Venmo and PayPal um, for donations to, to keep that going. Um, so next up, somebody who is here, it's going to be Tori Huynh. So go ahead, Tori. Hi. Um, so uh, I'm Tori. Uh, I live in Los Angeles. I am a podcaster, illustrator, and uh, art director. Um, my work sort of ranges from like really personal, like diary comics to um, my own like IP that I'm working on right now called Haiba Trung. Um, I kickstarted both um, a personal zine called Beloved and I kickstarted Haiba Trung like three years ago. And um, right now I'm currently just sort of like experimenting with like printing at home and um, podcasting with my friends, obviously. We also moved into doing Twitch stuff with our community. So we're like a, we're a queer, queer little collective of, of like best friends. And um, yeah, oh, my podcast is The Last Adventure. Thank you for asking. <laughs> um, it's with me, my two best friends from like high school. Um, we all live in different areas of the US. Uh, I'm originally from Virginia and my best friend currently lives in Virginia. And our other best friend is Alia. She lives in Houston. And it's basically just like a multimedia analysis, sort of like queer, queer lens. They're both lesbians, but I'm bi, but um, yeah, it's just sort of like us getting into like the things that we're into and like different TV shows and like movies and games that we're all sort of like dissecting and ingesting and just, you know, just like shoot, shooting the, shooting it. <laughs> but yeah. Um, so I have my three books here right now. So um, Beloved is um, a personal anthology of comics that I um, I wrote over the course of like two years, I would say, um, but I kickstarted this and it sort of just like goes over like my experiences with heartbreak and sort of like, it's just like things that I dealt with in my early twenties. Um, it's on my store, which I will show you soon. <laughs> And uh, hold on, let me share my screen. So yeah, so right here is my store. Um, I have my three books here. Um, and if you don't feel like actually like committing to buying a book, I also have my Gumroad, which I have high butt strong for um, pay at your own price. I also do um, like demos for Photoshopping and stuff and like illustration. Um, I really believe in like accessible, easily digestible information. That's like industry, industry standard, I guess, which I think is kind of, yeah. But like, it's basically accessible information for free. And um, right here is my social media handle or my um, Instagram where I just like post my work and like what I'm up to and pretty much all my socials are the same. So you can find me at Gallmore Jungle. Um, 
Yeah. Are we good on time? Do I still have time? <laughs> you, you ended perfectly on time. Oops, That's it. Yeah, Love excellent. It. Thank you so much. Yeah, um, thank you. Yeah, that was. Yeah. Um, wonderful. So, um, final, uh, final person in our group. Um, also, I will be presenting. Um, just going to get this up. Um, do, do, do. It's going to be Whitney Romberg. Um, so Whitney Romberg is based in Los Angeles, California. Um, and Whitney has been making zines since 2014. The zines that she creates are fueled by her experiences as a queer Asian American, day-to-day -day life, and mental health. She also founded and ran Santa Cruz Zine Fest from 2016 to 2018. When she is not creating, she likes to show people pictures of her cats and take up random skills, uh, which I think is something, again, that this group can uh, connect to because there's a lot of just different um, and, and varied skill sets among everybody with Lawrence with his music and um, Tori and Neil with podcasting and um, uh, every, everything else uh, that we're everybody else is getting into, not strictly just zines or, or comics or visual art, but a different media. So um, there's there's a picture of one of Whitney's uh, zines here. Um, it's, it's got some uh, wonderful um, hand uh, kind of hand lettering. Um, and, and the zine is entitled, If It Involves Fake Smiling, I Probably Won't Go. <laughs> um, a zine about being an introvert. Fittingly, uh, so there's there's some some floral decorations on that, um, and it's a, it's a it's a nice vibrant blue colored um, cover of that zine. Um, so you can find uh, Whitney zines at uh, Whitney Romberg. Um, there's a there's a uh, Weebly site there. Um, there's uh, Whitney's Instagram and Etsy site and uh, Venmo and Kofi. Um, never know if I'm saying that right uh, for supporting the artist. Um, so yeah, that's that wraps up our um, our sharing. We still do have ten minutes left, um, so I think um, this is probably not enough time for just a little bit more of a of a hangout with everybody. Um, so I, I, just to bring it back to what um what other pursuits everybody has and how that feeds into you know how it's all kind of part of one practice with zine making i would love to know anybody's thoughts about that like about the podcasting or the music or um you know the the organization um uh uh practice uh that danielle was was telling us all about um yeah what how how are some ways that um anybody's practices inform one another anybody's free to jump in and answer that if they if they would like to i can share a little bit about um some of the work that i'm doing um they all mm -hmm. the, yeah, go a lot of the things that i work on feel really disparate when i talk about them like manifesto writing or arranging but um, in my mind, they all center around this idea of um, ways to stay calm and ways to ground myself. And um, by talking about that and sharing it with other people, it definitely provides a network um, of other people that are also feeling that way too. Awesome. Yeah, I think for me, zines are a way to go deeply personal. Like that's kind of how I started out with zines and that's kind of what I came back to in the end. So my, um, my podcast and my books are interviews that I've done with other people. So those are not about me, but uh, my newer zines, the Art Life series is very, very much about me. Uh, with the exception of this one, which is um, basically, I call this a $1 version of my first book because <laughs> I just wanted to make something cheaper for folks that couldn't commit to buying the whole book. 
Nice, awesome. Um, I also heard about um, collaborations that um, everybody does. Um, does anybody want to speak to kind of the process of collaborating and any successes or, or challenges in that? Yeah, yeah um, go ahead. Uh, I've done several, uh, considering I'm doing a collaboration at the moment right now too, and I've done several collaborations with other zinesters in the past. Uh, the best thing about it within, uh, especially within the spectrum of uh, comics within zines as well, is that it becomes more of a, in my opinion, just becomes more of a uh, experience of friendship and learning to communicate. It's almost like having a partnership and in a way where you're able to just kind of create something for the sake of, you know, the, the will to put something out there, whereas it would be like a comic book storytelling or an actually like politically activist um, pamphlet in a zine form. I, I've really found that the zine medium in itself really because of its self-validation without needing anything like a middle middle person, in, you know, to publish it out or put it out there. The collaboration aspect makes it more immediate and much more uh, communal than said like something in some cases commercially uh, created for the sake of selling a or creating something together for the sake of just for it to exist because it's driven by so much passion and just for or to put out a message out there. So my experience uh, that collaboration and with the, infu the infusion of zine culture and communities really I think really um, inspires people to come together in ways they may have not expected to, especially with creative practice. Nice. Yeah, so some great stuff in there. It's, it's really good to hear. Um, I, so I, I know we have, we have two podcasters here. Um, I, 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 that, that's, that's something that I, is kind of a new, new art form that, um, but it's, it's really cool. Uh, Nia, especially how, how you're able to, you know, um, spotlight people who 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 do do zines and and make art and stuff. Um, I just wanted to ask if uh, either of you, um, Tori or Nia, have have uh, kind of advice for um, anybody to, who wants to get get a podcast started or or kind of you know work within their their networks as as you're doing. Um, I guess I can talk about that a little bit. Um, my podcast was. Specific, it was always going to be like a um, like a consistent group of people talking about stuff together. Um, obviously, like podcasts, um, sort of just like how podcasts are produced or whatever ranges, especially like through the content that you're trying to make or whatever. But um, I think it really, for us specifically, since it's with my three best friends, it's very much based on mutual understanding and chemistry. Like, I think that's like a really big part of it. Like, I think, you know, getting the technical stuff down, it'll take time and that's okay. But for me, it's more just like having the energy to even make the content with the people that you want to make it with, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I can see that for sure. Um, oh, nice. And then, and then Nia just showed, the, showed this uh, link, uh, our, our podcast, The New Zines. Cool. Yeah, I wrote that in 2013. I haven't reread it. Hopefully it's decent. Um, but yeah, I've been podcasting for seven years. And I think the most important thing is um, consistency in terms of like putting it out on a regular basis, because listeners really want to know when it's coming. And I think the easiest way to lose them is to have like an inconsistent schedule, which I'm not saying that I've never put out an episode late because I definitely have, but um, I do think consistency, like making sure they have an idea of what they're getting, not that it always has to be exactly the same, but the format is consistent and the schedule is fairly consistent as well. Nice. Yeah, that's that's good practical advice. Um, Yael, um, I just want to ask a question for you just so we all have a chance to kind of share at this last, uh, last round. Um, I know that you lead um, the uh, printmaking workshops at Zine Fest. I'm just wondering if, if you have wanted to share any any memories about um, how that's gone in the past. And um, well, I'll just maybe uh, tweak that that I've been um, helping out with a print organized protest. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Which is sort of like a non, it's like a just a bunch of printmakers that are volunteering their time to help people print protest posters um 
was an organization that was sort of born like right after the last election. Um, oh, so it started in 2016? Yeah. Oh, wow. I thought it had been around kind of for longer. A response, kind of people getting ready for the Women's March. And then like sure. there was a lot of protest pretty much since then. I feel like there's been way more protest than before. Um, but I would actually also say that it seems like uh, the people who like I, I have now somehow unofficially become the guardian of the supplies for the Bay Area print organized protest stuff. So moving forward, actually, if people ever want to like put together a, a printmaking event of that kind, I will be the person to talk to. But um, that's just because somebody is moving out of town because everybody's moving out of town. Oh, yeah, I know. Well, yes. Um, th so so people should contact you if, if they want to become guardians of the supplies as well. Well, no, or if they want to like make prints. For okay, prints. cool. I personally have found like I, I don't feel very comfortable in like super crowded. Um, like I don't often go to protests, but it mm. makes like it's a great feeling to be able to help other people yeah messages out to the streets um and yeah you're, you're playing I, like I am involved even though i don't like necessarily leave my house um, yeah yeah that's great yeah I, I mean i think that's that's inspiring just to, to think that everybody has a part to play and, and you know if you're if you can get those visual messages out in a really clear and and uh, you know appealing way then that's that's your contribution that's really cool yeah yeah thanks for sharing about that um, great. Okay, we have we have a minute left, so I'm just going to um, go back really quick, um, jump back to the screen share, so that we can let you know about um, our upcoming events. And going to be. Um, oh, I missed those. Um, so here's first of all, here's the links of everybody uh, from tonight. Um, if you uh, would like to. Take a screenshot of this of this screen. Um, that's that's a, a good way to go. Just has everybody's um, links in one place um, for uh, portfolios. And I'll move on from this. Um, this is our upcoming uh, all of our upcoming events. Um, so tomorrow Tuesday we have another uh, show and tell group followed by Wednesday and Thursday. Each of those are at six p.m. Um, this is tonight has been another mix of, of fantastic uh, artists. And I'm, I'm just, as I said, super inspired by all the practices that, that people do uh, in addition to zines and, um, and, and then of course the zines themselves are all really strong. So um, yeah, it's, it's just, these are, these are great ways of, of getting to know uh, all of the, the artists who, who are participating in our community in, in kind of, you know, we, we're picking up different things um, that maybe, you know, we, we might not even have learned at the in-person fest. So um, really exciting to see all the all the show and tell events. Um, we have our thinking captions reading with this week's guest of honor, Death P. Sun. That's going to be on Friday at 5 p.m. Uh, on Saturday, we have a Rezo demo with Shoot Studio. And then a drawing and zine making session. These are really fun, just open-ended, hang out, get some work done for an hour. So the Rezo demo is at uh, 1 p.m. and the drawing and zine making session is at 2 p.m. On Sunday, then we have another show and tell group at two. Um, we have a panel with parent artists. So what it's like to um, balance child raising and, um, and making, making art. Um, and then a Q&A with Tana Tucker, who is leading us into then uh, our week three uh, programming. So um, yeah, has a great opportunity this weekend to catch, um, catch events from our two guests of honor. And uh, looking forward to uh, seeing everybody uh, in a in a virtual way and and um, definitely tune into uh, to what we have. Um, I just want to um, as as we go out here um, make a, a pitch for the uh, week two festival merch. So we have merch from each of our guests of honor and um, Death P Sons uh, Rezo prints and stickers are um, you can see them here um, just. Uh, really cool that he's got the 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 cat uh, that the fruits in his work, um, and and the, so that's available at sfzinefest.org. So as I said earlier, that that really supports um, Zine Fest when you when you buy for our website. All right, thank you so much for coming, everybody.